Hello, I'm a motorcyclist, so I, oh, I'm a motorcyclist, so I have the power of invisibility. You do too, I'll show you how. What you see is not the real world. What? Well, this is your brain's best guess at reality based on input from your eyeballs. Oh. And somewhere in translation, motorcycles vanish. Invisibility 101, saccades. And these are quick eye movements from A to B, where everything in between is suppressed by the brain. It's invisible. Invisible. Better. Your brain has to ignore saccadic info because the eye flicks too fast. If it kept data from a fast-moving eye, your vision would be blurry and useless. So when we scan an intersection, our brains prefer to see a series of pictures. Each mental photo is called a fixation, and in the movements between fixations, the saccades, our brain sees nothing. Of course, life is not a flip book, and so the brain uses its fixations to guess at what happens in between. It makes stuff up to paint a smooth picture. See the problem. As your eyes scan, small objects like motorcycles can be entirely lost in saccades. Your brain will fill the blank spaces based on the fixations it does see, creating an invisible motorcycle. Now, fortunately, the solution is simple. Slow your scan. If we flick our eyes left to right quickly, we're leaving big areas that can get lost in saccades. But if you scan slowly, something the size of a motorcycle is unlikely to get missed. Now go tell a car driver that. Just as the brain blocks data it considers blurry, it also blocks what it considers irrelevant. And this is called selective attention. Take a busy intersection in Toronto. Count how many motorcycles you can spot. The answer is zero. But the real question is, when did that title change? And where's my bow tie? Limited focusing power means that our brains subconsciously filter out what they deem unimportant. And they make part of the real world invisible. You watch and see. Now here's the kicker. In everyday life, our brains revert to instinct to decide what is and isn't relevant. We are more likely to notice things that are dangerous or sexy, and less likely to notice things that are harmless. Thousands of years ago, primitive man developed his keen sight by constantly having to use his eyes in searching for foes and food. For survival, that's great. We remove stuff that doesn't pose a threat so we can focus on things that might kill us or mate with us. Yay. But for motorcyclists and the small, modestly dressed road users competing with two-tongue hunks of death for a spot in someone's limited cognition, well, guess which one becomes invisible? So when riders whine about the moronic and murderous car drivers, yeah. well, it's annoying. Because in all likelihood, the car's behavior has nothing to do with intelligence or diligence. And you could be Pope Francis riding with a backpack full of puppies. My unconscious is still likely to see it as non-threatening and therefore less important for my driving brain to be aware of. Overriding a million years of survival reinforced thinking is not this easy. The solution to overcoming selective attention is in the research. And we need to appear dangerous or sexy. So. Honk. Well, that noise instantly associates you with danger and putting you at the top of a car driver's subconscious ranking. Also, wear red, a color further associated with road hazards and bonus points, subconscious sexual attraction. That's exactly where I'm going to aim for. Peripheral blindness. In just 20 degrees off the line of sight, humans lose 90% of their vision. Now, bad news, buddy, you are legally blind in your peripheries. See, try to focus on me and read that. You can't do both at the same time. Now, we don't notice how crappy our peripheries are because, again, the brain fills in what it thinks should be there. Unfortunately, it uses historical observations to paint that picture. Have you ever wonder why you get tired faster in foreign cities? No. That's because your brain has no visual bank to pull from. Okay. And your senses are working overtime, perceiving new things because they can't presume any familiar ones. So? So put yourself less than a mile from home and motorcycles become invisible. One third of accidents happen here. Why? Because our brains start relaxing by filling smudgy peripheries with recycled info.
This four-way has been empty the last 10 days you've driven it. Your brain might search through the blur to see something new, but just as likely, it'll serve up a ready-made image of what it thinks will be there, the invisible motorcyclist. Our solution is twofold. And one, be extra careful in residential areas. People's brains will be on autopilot. And two, use movement to exploit a car driver's survival instinct. Peripheral vision might blow at pretty much everything, but it is very good at detecting movement. Well, probably because things used to pop out at us on the Serengeti. So as you approach a residential intersection, make those hand signals. That movement will trigger an instinct in a driver's brain to actually perceive rather than just presume their peripheries. Relying on the movement of your motorcycle is not enough, by the way, because as two vehicles approach the same spot at the same speed, like right before a collision, and they occupy a constant place in each other's field of view. There's no relative movement here, so you need to move. And so the examination goes on. Beam blindness. You know those vertical beams on either side of your windshield? Oh, you don't see anything near there. The brain gets bored easily, so it eliminates stuff that is constantly in frame. A case in point, where is your nose? It's within the field of view. You're perfectly capable of seeing things down in the parallax zone, but the nose is invisible because the brain is bored of it. In the same way, car drivers' brains tune out window beams and anything near to them. Now, fortunately, beams are at 10 and 2 in pretty much every car, so the solution when you ride towards a vehicle at 10 or 2 is to know that you're probably invisible. Nothing can sneak up on him. Ooh, our final course, graduate level, contrast blindness. And the Air Force has determined that contrast is the greatest factor in the visual acquisition of targets. Uh-huh. Well, it turns out they're primarily concerned with not getting shot. Duh. But we can take their research and flip it. First, fighter pilots love to attack out of the sun. So as we ride, we need to be wary of where our shadow points. And the sun is blowing out all contrast in that direction. I'm probably invisible to anyone observing me from over there. Second, fighter planes are painted to blend into their backgrounds to reduce contrast. So, screw black rain gear. Now on a gray day, braking distances are high. Contrast is low. And if I then go and blend into the asphalt, I'm extremely likely to be invisible. Now true, I don't want to stand out this much on a daily basis, but by definition, you only wear waterproofs when it's teeming. So we should all be able to stomach high contrast rain gear. And that is five ways motorcyclists become invisible. Invisible. Invi- Oh. Ass.